Hi, my name is Famit Shabib, and this is our Design 2 project. It's called Jable Computer Vision System, in short, JCVS. Our team consists of me, Saida Brajahin, and Evan Thomas. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Wilfredo Moreno. Our industry partner is Jable Healthcare. The goal of our project is to run an object detection machine learning algorithm on an NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is a compact single board computer and detect polyps from endoscopic feeds. Our motivation is to explore the power of AI and machine learning algorithms to analyze large amounts of data and assist professionals in the healthcare industry to improve the quality of healthcare. The rest of the video will be a demonstration of our working project, its features, and some performance analysis. Hello everyone, I'm Abrar. Um, to train our model, uh, we need a data set. So the data set we have chosen is called Hypercavasser. The reason we've chosen this data set is because it's open source and they, the team has collaborated with um, hospitals and medical experts to collect data and label them. So this data set has a lot of gastrointestinal um, abnormalities uh, labeled, but we're only interested in the polyp images uh, especially the polyp images that have labels as well. In order to get our object detection model to detect polyps, we have trained a pre-trained model of SSD MobileNet um, in Google Colab using PyTorch um, for 100 epochs. So as you can see after the training, this is the these are the training results of loss. Um, we have pulled it up using TensorBoard. So this is the total loss, but then you also have the classification loss for detecting the polyp, as well as the regression loss to, for the bounding box. So one way the loss can be made even lower is by retraining the model uh, using new data or new images of polyps in the data set. Hi, my name is Evan Thomas, and here's the Jetson Nano. Uh, here we have connected to it the Raspberry Pi camera V2. It supports up to 1080p video. Uh, we also have the connected to a monitor and a 4 amp power supply. The power supply allows us to run the Jetson Nano at maximum power specification, which speeds up the processing time a lot. and um, it also has four gigabytes of RAM. There is an alternative two gigabyte version, but the four gigabyte allows us a lot of more overhead for uh, training our models. I'm going to show you the demo of running the object detection model on our Jetson Nano. So this is the Jetpack Linux distribution. As you can see, we wanted to show you the um, starting process of running the model. So first we will go into this um, library called Jetson Inference. This is the NVIDIA's package library for object detection in the Jetson Nanos. Um, if you are getting this library at the start, then uh, you have to build this because it uses a lot of C++ applications that need to be linked together. Now we will go into the SSD model uh, folder because we are running a SSD model. And here we will be running our uh, object detection model uh, because here we have all the data for uh, our model. So here, as you can see, there's the label where you have the label of the background and the polyp. You have the uh, frozen model itself. So this is the application that we use to run our object detection model. It's called DetectNet. It's a C++ application, and I'll be explaining through some of the arguments. So the first argument is the model or the frozen model. So if you load the model in the .onx model, uh, at first it will start to build an engine with TensorRT, but if you have already built it, then it will load the TensorRT itself. Then we have the labels that we saw earlier of the polyp. Um, the input blob is the, it's referring to the node of the model itself. 
the output CVG is another node that it's referring to the scores or the confidence scores of the model. Same thing for output B boxes, it's referring to the um, bounding box coordinates that the object detection model will output. And lastly, we have CSI zero, that's referring to the um, camera, the MIPI CSI camera itself. So now we will be running the DetectNet application for the model to detect polyps from a video. As you can see, I'm holding the um, Raspberry Pi camera towards a video of a polyp. One thing to mention is that this DetectNet application, the default threshold uh, for its confidence on the uh, polyps is 50%. So now we'll be running the application. So as you can see, the model is detecting a polyp and putting a box over it. The accuracy for detecting the polyps is around 80 to 90 percent. Although, as you can see, there are some false detections now and then. We believe it can be improved with a more large and variable data set. So this is a presentation of the latency measurement. So we have the Raspberry Pi camera connected to the Jepson Nano pointing toward this monitor over here, which is showing the polyp feed and a timer on the side. And this is being processed and shown as an output on this monitor, which is connected to the Nano. Uh, there is a time difference, very slight time difference between the input and the output, and that is the latency. In order to capture that latency, we can use a, a video uh, of both the monitors and pause the video and see what the time difference is at that moment. So this is a demonstration of that. So we're taking the video. Okay, now let's look at the video. Let's pause it at a moment. Okay, so, okay, this is a clear segment of the video. We can see on the input side, we have the milliseconds of 380 and on the output, we have 202 milliseconds. Okay, so this is the script that we wrote uh, to perform image processing on the uh, camera stream. So uh, we're using a library in Python called OpenCV. Um, OpenCV is useful because it allows us to do a lot of uh, uh, image processing and um, different things with the camera using built-in functions. So what this uh, script does is <clears throat> It uses GStreamer to get a feed from the Raspberry Pi camera, and then it displays the camera, um, or it takes that input pipe, it uh, performs some image processing, which in this case is very simple. It just uh, changes the alpha values, which will change the contrast slash brightness, and then it re-outputs the image uh, the video stream with the changes that are made um, and then this code here just changes it so that you can adjust the values on the fly in in the video stream so the demonstration of this script is here so here we just have the Pi camera and using the arrow keys the brightness can be adjusted just like that. So that is adjusting the alpha values. And you can see in the script, the alpha values are adjusting right here. Um, so the alpha value is just one thing that you can change. You can also change many other options using OpenCV, which are detailed on the documentation.